Welcome to this week's episode of Listen to Your Coaches. I'm your coach, Mike Wilkins, here with coach Will Morrill. This is going to be a pretty stout-centric podcast as we are going to discuss um, the fights that just happened mere hours ago uh, and the week leading up to it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, before we jump into that, though, uh, still stout-centric, but I kind of want to touch on some girls' high school wrestling real quick. So this year is the first year that the PIAA has sanctioned you know, um, girls wrestling, meaning that they have their own individual state sanctioned tournament. Uh, in the past, there has been, you know, um, women's wrestling in Pennsylvania, but it wasn't recognized by the PIAA, so it wasn't school affiliated. So this is the inaugural season for it, which means it's the inaugural, inaugural, it's the first Whippeal Championship. <laughs> um, Stout PGH, we had three uh, students of ours represented in the Whippeal Wrestling Tournament. Yep. That's awesome. All three made the finals for their respective schools. So sick. Yep. And uh, we came home with two champions. So I want to give a uh, big shout outs to uh, Asia Fowler from Woodland Hills, a runner up at 130 pounds. Sophia Davis from Plum, champion at 124 pounds, having quite a season. I think that brought her record to 26 and 1 on the season. And she's only a sophomore. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, she's gonna be really good, and uh, I think she's gonna be a fighter. So we're gonna get we're gonna get some work with her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also Isabella McNutt of Hampton, uh, who pinned her way through her tournament, becoming the 112 pound Whippeal champion. Um, uh, Bella, she's a senior. Uh, she does train with the fight team uh, in the off season. Whenever she's not in wrestling season, she's at Tuesday night fight team practice, sparring with the whole team. Uh, she's Quite, quite. She's got quite a Taekwondo background behind her. Um, I think multiple time national champion in that. But you know what I'm concerned about? That's wrestling. <laughs> and she recently committed to wrestle at the next level. She'll be attending Lock Haven University uh, to k pursue her wrestling career in college. So congratulations to all three of those young young ladies. Um, hope some of the some of your time at Stout has has aided at least a little bit. Uh, I mean, it at least helped with your love for wrestling, if nothing else. <laughs> Just being around you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope so. I hope it at least made you like love it a little more. Uh, whether it helped with your actual skill development or not, that's another thing. But uh, congratulations to all three of them. Uh, looking forward to seeing where it takes you. Um, as I said, Bella and Asia, they're both uh, seniors. But so Sophia, just a just a little sophomore, so uh, big things to come for her still in high school as well. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, two more years, already a Whitfield champ. Like I said, I believe twenty six and one. Um, yeah, just gonna skyrocket. It's gonna hit hit her stride. She's got her whole junior and senior year to go still. So re really cool stuff. Really excited to follow. Yeah. Very impressive. Yep. All right. So congratulations to them. Let's run into our week. All right, so we're just going to go chronologically. Let's just go chronologically just to keep it as easy as possible. For perfect. Um, so I guess we'll start Let's go. on... We uh, drove up. Where did we drive up to? We had to go out of town. Yep, we had to head up to uh, Niagara Falls. N Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls. <laughs> the U.S. side. <laughs> the U.S. side, which is it's not... not cool. <laughs> not my favorite city. <laughs> <coughs> oh, no. Because no. I remember being like on the you know Canadian side. Which know, is cool from what I recall. Which is... Definitely but cooler. also, I haven't been there for 16 years, so like I don't really know <laughs> what changes. Oh man! So we drove up there Wednesday uh, with Farmon, who had a fight at LFA 177. 77. Um, Wednesday night made weight. Hot in the hot. Well, we cut cut down cut down the weight. The weigh-ins were Thursday morning, but mm -hmm. got got him down the weight. Uh, well, we got him close to weight within striking range. Well, within an easy striking range. Mm -hmm. Um, Wednesday night, uh, he woke up on weight. Thursday mm -hmm. morning, weigh-ins were at 9.45 a.m., yep. giving him plenty of time to recover. Weighed in, boom, dead nuts on the dot. Um, exact weight. Yeah, uh, so so very good weight cut, you know, and that mm -hmm. was something that, like, you know, I was wondering how that would go. Yeah, because he's, he's a big he's, dude. He's a big boy, um, but, like, you know, he handled the weight cut well. It was the first time with him cutting weight with us mm -hmm. using like our weight cutting methods, mm -hmm. which can be scary sometimes for like people who have cut weight in other, in other ways. Right. And it, and it typically takes a little bit of time to get buy-in. Definitely. Do you remember yeah. the first time you did a weight cut the way that we kind of do it now? 
I, I mean, I remember it being a thing. I don't remember what fight it was or whatever. Like, Do you that. remember the feeling of being like, oh, my God. I'm oh, gonna... how easy it was? Well, before that, because you're going to start a little heavier than a, you know. Oh, gonna... this feeling of fear as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. And, like, actually, there was never a time where I didn't, like, I wasn't afraid, like, maybe it won't work this time. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know? Like, every time, like, you know, it's like, it's like science, right? It's yeah. like, it's, yeah, so, but, like, every time I'd be like, what if it doesn't work this time? <laughs> what if the weight doesn't come off? Like, yeah, yeah, it's, but, it's, yeah, it's scarier. It's scary every time. Um, we'll, we'll touch on him later, but, like, since we're on a weight cutting, kind of, like, Lucas, same thing. He was, like, it's the first time he followed it to a T because, like, you get nervous, like, towards the end and you're like, I'm just not going to drink that much or something like that. Because the way we do it is a little different from, like, you know, how traditionally people do, have done it in fighting and wrestling and everything. Oh, yeah. It's very much a, a science-based thing. Yeah. But, again, it can be it can be scary, especially if you haven't done that, you know. Yeah, and, and Lucas had mentioned that, like, it was coming off too fast. He had to slow yeah. down. Kind of, yeah. He was going to be on way too early. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and, and the more you do it, the more buy-in you get. Like, even if they, like, do, like, it not 100%, mm-hmm. they're still like, oh, wow, like, that's how you do this? Yeah. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then, like, you get more and more buy-in until eventually they fall it to a T, and then you got easy cuts from there on out. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. So, <clears throat> make way Thursday. Make way Thursday. And then do some on. just, like, signing of... Yep. things of documents and such mm-hmm. and then he put on a ton of weight afterwards <laughs> yeah yeah he put on a ton of weight he got up uh, put on 20 pounds 20 pounds in like 24 hours maybe yeah. less yeah which like you know it's normal <laughs> <laughs> that was not nothing like abnormal to me <laughs> to you You're... i was i got um my last fight at 155 i was I put on 24 pounds within three hours. <laughs> You're next level. Yeah, yeah. And I've got a timestamp documented. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know we we might have a lightweight in Pittsburgh who puts on more weight than you? Dude, I think so. I think, he, I think, it's, I think it's official. Dude, he's huge. Dude, I think it's official. I heard he was 184. I heard bigger. Oh, hey. He, the, 184 is bigger than I <laughs> I got I got like one eighty. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that's not we're talking about uh Mr. Cowboy Eddie. Yeah. He's a big boy. Big lightweight. I was big shocked lightweight. he makes lightweight. Yeah, I mean like I wasn't I was shocked how big he got at like I like I don't know, maybe I just got like a little bit of like old guy syndrome where I like I'm like, ah these kids they're little. <laughs> you know? So I was like like I never like looked at him like, man, he's huge or anything. I was just like, ah, these little kids. I don't know, dude. The first time I saw him, I was like, that dude, I can't believe he's a lightweight. Dude, even some of these, like, light heavyweights, I don't know what's going on with me, but I'm like, yeah, they're kids. Dude, I'm not going to lie. There have been some, like, light heavyweights recently where, I'm, like, their frame isn't that big. And I'm like, yeah. you're not as big as I thought light heavyweights were. Yeah, when you hear, like, like it, like, I think of, like, you know, like, some giants. Yeah, I'm some like, big oh. dudes. Yeah. Okay, all right. Let's Regardless. Let's, uh, so, yeah, made weight, rehydrate well. Um, have a good shake out on Thursday yeah, yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, Thursday night. He wanted to get a little get the blood moving a little bit, so mm-hmm. we went down, did a good shake out. Um got the heart rate elevated. Mm-hmm. Sweat, some sweat going. Yep. Yeah. We're cracking some pads, doing some grappling. Yeah, it was rough rough for me. You know. <laughs> pretty pretty rough for me too. Yeah, it was tough. We'll have uh, we'll have some film up at some point showing yeah, got some B roll. <laughs> got some B roll of it. Yeah, it wasn't super. wasn't super fun. Um, thinking like we need like maybe we start bringing someone to get like to get beat to up by far. Yeah. I don't understand why I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> like, why am I involved? You know, why? Why am I part of this sweating like operation? Like, get me out of here. Oh man. Okay. So fight day rolls around, right? Farman looks. Great, he's confident. Um, you know, also LFA, super well run. Yeah, very organized. I like that. Um, I like the organization. Um, you know, reminded me just like of CFFC. Like mm-hmm. everything was like pop, 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 organized yep. to a T. Very professional. Very next level. Absolutely. You know, so very like I I see how it prepare. Like it definitely prepares you for the for the main show. Oh, for sure. You know. Um. So yeah. 
uh, a great promotion. Would love to 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 do more work with them. Definitely. Yeah. Um. So yeah, leading up to the fight, get a great warm up in. Uh, I think we timed it perfectly. Yeah, really perfectly timed the warm up, which is something that's a little easier to do once you get yourself to that level, mm-hmm. right? Because things are so like, like the production is so timed out, Mm -hmm. you know, like they have like, like, you know, like, for example, he was the fourth fight on the prelim and there were four fights on the prelim, meaning that's taking you into the main card, which airs at nine on fight pass. So knowing you have like a hard line for when it gets switched Mm -hmm. to like the main card, right? Like can kind of tell you like the pacing of the fights. Mm-hmm. So the first fights at seven, first main card fights at nine. There's four fights on the other card. We're running one every half hour, mm-hmm. right? So you can pretty much get yourself an estimated time uh, of when you're gonna fight, which allows you to like also work that warm up. Where typically, as we'll get into a little bit here, uh, moving into the two four seven fights that just happened a few hours ago, um, you know, w- we base the warm up pretty much off of the fights lead preceding preceding said right. fight you know what i mean and then there's where you run into oh a quick finish or the other way around like oh there was like a eye poke or, or a groin strike so now this fight's like taking forever right the emts you know? had to go do something oh yeah yeah someone forever. gets like served up and the mm-hmm. and the ambulance has to leave and you have to wait yep. you know for for one to, to be there or whatever the doctor's busy can't be cage side mm-hmm. things like that so at that level, it's a little more boom, boom, boom. It's like hard to get it out of order. It'd have to be like something pretty crazy, yeah, to get yeah. it to go like out of order, right? You know. So, uh, yeah, great warm up, walk out, um, get into the fight itself. It was a good one. It was a good fight. Um, you know, very strong performance for Farmani. He came out hot, landing heavy, heavy shots. Tons of credit to his opponent, uh, Luke Roberts. Dude, he's a tough dude. Dude, tough and super. You tough. could like like when you looked at his face, like when I would look at his face like at Wayne's in pre fight, he just looked like a dude who like could take a punch. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like I'm like I'm like this dude like he just looked like durable and right. tough. Yeah. Right? You and he did mean? not disappoint. Dude, he looked like just like a dude who like, you know, like works outside in the winter. <laughs> you know what I mean? In shorts. Like, yeah, you look at him and you're like, yeah, this dude just looks like blue collar, tough as hell. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and he sure as hell was, man. Yes. He was taking some heavy shots um, from Farmon, who. Uh, I, I think he spent most of the first round sticking, you know, his jab. Oh, I really the whole fight. Sticking his jab, sticking his jab, and then hucking big overhands and landing them. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, they were landing. Um, and in the first round, there were some pretty crazy wrestling exchanges too. Yeah, Farman's got tremendous like hip dexterity and balance. His defense to the single leg is very good, and he's got a great overhook game. Mm-hmm. So like, taking him down is is very very tough. Yeah, yeah. you got to get both like you got to get both legs to put him down. Oh you know? yeah, and you got to put his legs together. Good luck. Yeah, mm-hmm. and even then it's tough. Uh, Luke, he did. Luke did get a takedown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, from on was up within seconds. Right. But like yeah, I mean credit to putting him down. I personally know how difficult that is to do. So anybody who's getting that done, you know, beast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> landing great shots and stuff. I think like, you know, giving us great information on like where we can you know, uh, clean up some mm-hmm. more things where we can add where the holes were. And, and that's best case scenario, right? Like it's sure like, is. you hear, you, there's the saying, oh, you win or you learn. And like, I do love that saying, mm-hmm. right? Like, you know, you win or you learn, meaning that like, uh, you don't lose because you lose from a loss. Mm-hmm. So as long as you, you know, benefit from your loss, you win or you, you know, you won or you learn. The best is winning and learning. You know what yes, I mean? Yes, it sure uh, is. You know, so you don't have to, eat that loss, but you still take it with a growth mindset of like, hey, like here goes things that I've could have done and should have done better. Here goes um, a good path on where to improve. Because all, all the fighters know they need to get better everywhere. Right. And when you need to get better everywhere, which every fighter needs to get better everywhere, right? Like you, like even like people who are very elite in one like like niche area of mm-hmm. the sport, they still want to get better in that area. And they know. Like oh, no one sure. of a, no one of a high level will tell you 
honestly, they might say it joking around. Right. But they won't tell you, be like, yeah, like, I can't get better. Yeah, they're like, oh, I maxed oh, it out. Oh, my striking, I'm done with that. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a 99 overall, right? Like, yeah, I've maxed it out. I'm, ma- I'm maxed out, yeah. So, like, when you have direction, though, it's easier to get better, right? You've got a direction, so it's easier to, like, put thoughtful focus into your upcoming training uh, and stuff like that. And like, you know, just like that, that path is going to lead to your improvement coming out at, at a better rate, a more efficient rate. Mm-hmm. And you're able to attack it a little bit more intelligently. Yep. Right. So, you know, if I'm, I'm on the fight, um, I saw a lo- just like a, I don't want to say like a lot, like oh, a lot of stuff, but I saw some stuff that I'm excited to get to work with him on. That was a great way to phrase it. That's yeah. exactly how I feel. I'm like, okay, you know, like it hurts. It hurts because I'm like, oh, I want to show you right now. Yes. Oh, bro, yes. guess what? Bro, when we're here, we could do this. And you know what we need to work on? When you're here, you got to go like this. Yep. Right? Uh, like, and stuff like that. Are you getting me? You understand me? Like, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like, yeah, so, like, you get really excited uh, to work on it, which is good, too. Like, if your coaches are excited to work on something with you, like, that you're going to get, it's going to yield good results. Get the most out of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's going to, yeah, get the most out of it. Yeah, so, uh, but unfortunately, we had a dislocated thumb. I think that happened the first or second. It happened in the first. Yeah, yeah. he hits pretty hard yeah. and uh, smashed his thumb up a little bit. Yeah, smashed his thumb, dislocated his thumb. I think they called it like a game... Gamekeeper's, gamekeeper's. injury or something yeah. like that. I've never heard of it until now. Um, but once we were told it was a gamekeeper's indi- or injury, whatever... Um, other people with experience in it were like, oh, yeah, that, da, 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 and stuff. So it's apparently a thing. I'm completely unaware of it. But despite being hurt, Farman stayed behind the jab, kept wrestling well. Yeah, yeah, he certainly stayed behind the jab very well. And um, a dominant victory. And, you know, took, took, took good, like, instruction. Oh, yeah. In-fight instruction. Oh, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And for his first time working with us in mm-hmm. a corner, you know, like, you don't know how that's going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, you know, gave some very clear instruction in the corner and he went out and followed exactly 90% of it. Yeah. 95% of it, maybe 99% of it. There's <laughs> one thing that he just would not do for me. I'm like, bro, like, is this a language barrier? <laughs> like, how do I, how do I say center? <laughs> like, you know I mean? Yeah. Like middle, <laughs> inside. <laughs> like, I'm like, uh. <laughs> I'm like in front of him and I'm like going like this in the middle. I'm like right here. <laughs> oh my God. It was a good time though. And he was, dude, he was fun in the fight too. Dude, he was fun in the fight. The whole trip. Dude. Oh my God, dude. He's such a legend. Dude. I can't guy. get enough of him. Dude, I can't real. get enough of him. For dude, real. he's so funny. No pain, Rocky. Dude, yeah. Oh my God, dude. And he was like after his fight, dude, he was just like on next level. Dude, like the contagious. happiest. Such contagious happiness, right? Like he's like got an ice bag on his leg. They're talking about how his hand might be broke, but his thumb was dislocated and we're going to the hospital for his hand and stuff. And he's just like living it. Dude. Oh yeah. He's dude. just living it. Joking quit, the whole time. The whole time. It's just so funny. Dude, honestly, the whole what trip. Great, it was a great trip with him. Like I'm so happy that we did that trip with him. I had oh, such yeah. a good time. You know, just got to know him more. How he takes a little bit, and dude, he's the best. Oh, dude, love it. Uh, he's just got the best, best vibes. So much yeah, fun to be around. Yeah, dude. And you know, dude, he wants it. He wants it bad. Oh yeah, and he's like, got the skills. He's got all the potential. The yeah. work ethic. Here goes the thing, like, dude, like he's like fairly raw. You know, he is now three and zero as a pro, three and zero pro. Off, of, like he's only st- he's only been training since twenty twenty one. Like. He's already 3-0 and as a pro, and, like, you know, like, like he's very good, but he's, like, not even close to, like... His full potential. Yeah, dude, he's, like, he's like he hasn't even hit 50%. I think that people are going to be surprised if they see this last fight and what they see out of him in this next one. Yeah, like, he's not even at 50% of what mm-hmm. he's going to be, and it's, mm-hmm. like, scary because, like, he's I train really with him, good. and I'm, like getting worked like, well, <laughs> okay so last week one of his last training yeah sessions, his last his last sparring session mike was and shark tank miserable dude. so we split five minute rounds right so a shark tank right like fresh guy on you fresh guy mm-hmm. on you it's designed to to wear you out mm-hmm. right 
We, dude, we got worn out in the Shark Tank. I yeah. threw up, dude. I puked twice. There were multiple times where Mike would be like, he's finished, he's finished. And Mike would have to hop in to save me, or I'd have to hop in to yeah, save Mike. Dude. Oh and we're just God. like, oh. Yeah. And he's just like, doesn't get tired. Yeah, and like no. just keeps moving. Yeah. And, and even when he's tired, he just carries on. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, very impressed with that. Great win. The Lion. I found out his nickname, the Incage. Lion. Yeah, dude. Incage, post-fight announcement. So that's actually not uncommon. Like, uh, like I've heard multiple people last night at the 247 fights being like, oh, the Lion. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, didn't know, didn't know. Dude, yeah, I didn't either until they raised his hand. I was like, the Lion. I was, I was like, like, that's super cool, though. I was like, yeah, dude. Fitting for him, too. Oh, very fitting yeah. for him. Yeah. Very fitting for him. All right, well, uh, keep your eyes open for Farman Hassanov. And, and that fight is up on YouTube still, if you guys want to check yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on the LFA YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. um, just the prelims from LFA 177, which took place on February the 23rd. Check so, that out. Get in the comments. Yeah. Post an Azerbaijani flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's blow that up. Um, yeah, that'd be that's a great idea. That'd be good. Yeah, all LTYC listeners, get on there. Fire, fire an Azerbaijani flag. Uh, in the comment section, show your support there. Uh, I will greatly appreciate that. You know, and I'm sure Farm Mom will as well. All right. Shall we dive into some uh, Let's 247? Dive. So, Farm Mom's fight finishes up. Yeah. We hop yeah. in the car. He's got to go to the hospital. We're like, Warren, you got this. <laughs> We're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> We've been in this ghost town for far for too long. Days. <laughs> yeah, dude, I've been here three days. We gotta get out of here. He, he, Warren came. Warren came up the day of the fight, uh -huh. right? Hey guys, so, which we shouldn't complain about our travel because he came from Costa Rica. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he came from Costa Rica. He got stuck in Chicago. Yeah. Right. So he shows up. Uh, you know, fight day. He's like, hey, what's up? And we're like, oh, cool, cool, cool. And I'm like, hey, man, like. Can you take Farmon home so that way me and Will can jet out of here? You know, been here. I've got to get back for these fights. Da, 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 da. Stuff like that. He's like, yeah, I got it. And so Warren had like a, a super long night. And then they drove back. Warren was like, yeah, like we were supposed to sleep for four hours, slept for two. <laughs> drove back. Um, had like issues getting like, like after they left the hospital, mm -hmm. getting like the prescription filled and like stuff like that. Like, oh, dude, sounded like a nightmare. But Warren just like powered through you know oh dude it was so dude he's so funny all right okay all right so 247 fights we power through we get home uh late night friday night drove straight from the lfa fights down last four days not a lot of sleep lots of caffeine yeah not a lot of sleep lots of caffeine um you get up you go run practice i did yeah dude i don't know if like the fighters know like like, I can't believe you went to practice. <laughs> like, I, we like, got a big weekend next week, you know. Dude, gotta... we got a big weekend every weekend. I mean, that's true. <laughs> dude, yeah. But, like, I was like, man, dude, they can run their own damn practice. <laughs> I'm not, I was like, no shot I'm going to that. Yeah. Uh, well, that's good that you went to it. I'm so tired. I cannot believe that we're doing this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, back back on track. Carry so, on. 247 fights. We Bam. were the first... The third and the, the fifth, fifth fight. And the twelfth, which the 12th. was co -main. So. And you were the 13th as well. Yes. We'll touch on that. Yes. Um, with, uh, I was very honored to have uh, Bronco Busick ask me to be in his corner. Main um, event. Main event. It was an honor. And, um, you know, he comes down through Stout and. Uh, Get some cross training in with mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah, I love Bronco, dude. Such a great dude. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know Bronco very well, but I've known him for a while. Uh, I actually got the sit cage side for his pro debut. He made his pro debut in Bellator against like a highly regarded like like on the like Olympic ladder mm -hmm. wrestler Tyrell Fortune, who is currently thirteen and two in Bellator. Oof. All fights in Bellator, thirteen and two in the heavyweight division. Oof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and dude, uh, Bronco lost a dude. He he didn't lose that fight, and it was like. That was like gonna be like a huge upset, right? right. Like, like, this was like this guy that they're trying to build, and they like continue to build uh, post this fight. And Bronco, like, to, I remember Bronco like just like doing a lot of good like cage work offensively and stuff against a dude who's much much bigger than him. Yeah, much much bigger. 
Um, shoot, that was a, that was a while ago. Uh, but I was up there to corner Dom mm. uh, for that fight, and Dom was on on the main card of that mm. that Bellator. So I got to sit cage side and watch Bronco and that, and I've just been like super impressed with him ever since. Yeah, yeah. great training partner. And, yeah. yeah, solid dude. Yeah, very solid dude. Should we go bottom up, top down? Let's go bottom up. All right, so first fight of the night, Tyler, Tyler Fleming, Fleming. <laughs> making his amateur debut. Which is always, you, you know, you, just, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. You know? Let's touch on amateur debut. So, Tyler, uh, his pre-fight attire. He's got a hat. Killer. <laughs> Dude, his hat says, this actually is my first radio. <laughs> Dude, I was like, this is great. Dude, it was. I couldn't stop talking about it. Like, when we yeah. were walking out, I would, like, tell all the, the inspectors. I was like, look at his hat. Look at his hat. How cool is that? Yeah. Dude, and uh, also, like, you know, we had... The right amount of people in the back. We had our own nice little corner in the locker room. Yeah, lucky, lucky to get a little corner yep. in that locker room. Great vibes. Uh, we had the the correct amount of people back there to get everything yeah. going. Everybody was doing their job. Yep, got everyone you know wrapped I mean? up at the right time. Warm ups went right on time um, because it, you you really do have to hit that sweet spot because you don't want guys sitting around wrapped up for like multiple hours just waiting. Yeah, um, and you definitely don't want them warm like too early. You also don't want, want them too late. too late. Yeah, you got to hit that sweet spot. And, dude, everybody was, like, on their job. Exactly. Because there was no wasted. Yes. Like, yeah. Because when you have a larger team, like, it's not like, you know, when we corner farm on, it's just everything is on him. It's on him. Yeah, know? it's just me, Will, and Warren mm -hmm. just focused on farm on. One fight, one time, yeah. and we just hit that. You got four fights mm -hmm. on a card, right? Now it gets back to some teamwork. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, okay. I'm going to rap Tyler. You rap Max. I'll rap Joao. Right? Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Brittany, you're going to pad up Tyler. Vince, you're going to do this with mm -hmm. Joao. Like, you're doing this with Max. Like, like, dude, like, just firing down jobs. Everybody knew what they're doing. We're getting to that point where, like, we got a, a little bit more experience operating as, like, a larger team mm -hmm. uh, in, these, in these events. So, like, with that experience, you know, just comes a little bit more efficient work. And, like, the whole night was just, like, phew, Chugging, yep. chugging on, yeah. So uh, Tyler goes out. Let's talk a little bit about his fight. He had a great fight. He won a unanimous decision. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, really utilized the clinch well. He sure did, and that's uh, that's something that we take a lot of pride in in our gym. Is we do take a lot of pride in the clinch work. Yep. Everyone's everyone's good in the clinch from our gym. Yeah. And um, you know that's just you just. If you're good in the clinch, you always have the option of like we don't. It's have a to little bit of here. like an identity thing that we have as well, and like you know, like obviously we have a lot of different. We have a large team. We have mm -hmm. a lot of different fighters, and obviously fighters are going to have their own styles. Mm -hmm. But you can tell like some strengths of a gym or of a team by like some things that they all like have in common, mm -hmm. and we do probably spend a little bit more time. I know we spend more time on the clinch a than, lot like, more time. than most. Yes. Than most. Yes. I um, mean, you know, and, and, it, and it has paid off in several fights. Notably, Zack Snyder won a fight entirely with clinch. Yeah. No, and I'm just talking MMA. I'm not even talking about all the Muay Thai right. fights. Excuse me. And, and Tyler pretty much won this fight, like, basically exclusively with clinch. Mm -hmm. You know? He also, Did some outside striking and stuff, but, like, the clinch was, like, the... the most of the fight. Yeah. He also took a mean headbutt and his... Oh eyebrows yeah, yeah, Acc open. accidental. Headbutt. Oh, accidental, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. accidental headbutt. Um, yeah, his eye eyebrow split open like a star. Yeah, so like yeah. not a straight line. Like it was like cut up and down and left and right, like in a little jag there, and it was like folding down. Uh -huh. And like the doctor was like, "Can't let that get any worse." And like I'm like, dude, it's the first round. Yeah. Right. But the cut man was on it. My boy was firing dude, down. He killed he it. it. Yeah, dude. He nailed it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's my man. I love having him there. Oh, dude. He's great. Dude, I love it because, like, you know, like, um, at these lower level sh at the the level. amateur level, yeah. I don't want to call it lower level. Yeah. At the amateur level, um, shows that 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 you know have large amateur cards. Typically, like the coach, like I'll vaseline you up cage side. You know. Um, with like, you know, the inspectors and referees like watching and stuff. Um, but on the more larger promotions, 
they typically have a cut, a professional cut man. Mm -hmm. So like he takes over those duties too. And dude, whenever I see him at the the Doofers, I'm like, sick. Yes. Yeah. I'm like we got a professional cut man in here. And you know it's crazy. I I like forgot he was there because dude, yeah. when the when I first saw that cut and the doctor came in, I'm looking at the doctor and I was like, yo, can I put Vaseline in that? Can I? Because like you can't. You can't put Vaseline on a fighter in a in fight, fight yeah. without like express. Yeah, you gotta have. Yeah, and um, I was like, "Can I put Vaseline in it?" And the cut man's walking. I was like, oh, "Never mind, never mind." Yeah, <laughs> I was like, like, "You were like, oh, get the get this, get that, or whatever." And I was like, "I'm just gonna get him." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and he fixed it up fast. One 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 stop shop right there. And did yeah. a way better job than I could. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I mean, he's a professional. Yeah, that's like <laughs> like he's a professional at it. He did a tremendous job, dude. And he was super cool. He was set. so every fight that we had, I sat next to him uh -huh. for it. And dude, he was just like super cool. Dude, yeah. very cool. Yeah, very dude. Cool. Yeah, that's my man. Um, got that fight, dude. His opponent, his opponent was tough, young kid. He's gonna, dude, yes. dude, he's gonna be good. He's was only eighteen. He he's eighteen years old. Yeah, Beast. he's eighteen years old. He's out of a really good gym, PA mm -hmm. Combat Sports. Love those guys. Uh, they're super tough. Their head coach uh, mm -hmm. has beaten me. In jujitsu, for yeah. real, yeah, dude, he tried with me, <laughs> yeah, dude. Like 2008 or 2008 or 2009, oh, a while back, dude. This, this is the cool tournament. Me and uh, Greg, who just recently got his black yeah. belt, um, we were in the same bracket at this tournament. It was before we were teammates, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to say it was like 08, 09, something like that. And we both got subbed by Casey from <laughs> Big on the Bad Sports. Now, here goes my thing. I was just a kid, right? Like, <laughs> just a kid, all right? I was like 19 years old. You know, Casey was like, grown man. <laughs> He's grown man. Slapped a triangle on me. But he did uh, give me some, um, what you call it? Like, you know, like encouragement after the match. Yeah. He was like, oh, you're going to be good. I was like, oh, oh, thank you. That's thank cool. You. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I really liked them. They're a tough team. We went against them twice. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I need to pay better attention because I didn't know that we were good against them twice. I was like... What are you guys doing here? <laughs> yeah, like I didn't like just didn't put two and two together. But yeah, that kid's got got a bright future. Uh, he's got a real good like fighting spirit too. Oh like, yeah, you know what I mean, he was he never looked discouraged. Never looked discouraged. Mm -hmm. No, no. So no, I look forward to uh, watching more of him, and I you know just like especially like just like a young kid out there because like we can relate. Like we've got young kids. We've got Max. Who, who we've been young on. kids. Yeah, we've been young kids and stuff. And like you know he's out there, you know fighting grown men. So like hats off to him. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing seeing more of him. And like he wasn't discouraged after the fight either, mm -hmm. which is what I would be most concerned of with. Like, dude, he's a teenager. Exactly. You know, that's what I'd be most concerned of with the teenagers, like getting discouraged and like maybe letting that affect, you know, your untapped potential because you are nothing compared to what you're gonna be. Absolutely. Like, it's comical at the difference that you're going to make just in these next couple of years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be like, whoa, dude. You'll be like, oh, I could finish myself like in like 30 seconds if yeah. I fought my 18-year-old self. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, dude, I'd just destroy him. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, so that's cool. So Tyler, uh, big win for him, mm -hmm. debut win. Uh, you know, it's good. To, it feels good to start off with a win. Absolutely. As a debut. Uh, he put in tons of work. Sure did. He's basically been in a fight camp for... Because he originally thought he was going to be fighting in October, I believe, you know, mm. on the October. So, like, he's been, like, in, like, a kind of, like, camp mindset since then. And finally getting it in here in February. All right. So, that takes us on to Joao Martinez. Absolutely. Run me some. All right. So, uh, one of the big things that we've been trying to work on with Joao is a little faster start. Yeah. And this fight... Could have used a faster start. First Could have used round, a faster start. <laughs> first round, not his best round, right? Not like he got beat up or anything, but, you know, just... It was a competitive round. Yes. But he, he lost the round. I would say he lost that round, right? It was just a little too much disengagement, you know, one shot yeah. at a time. I mean, like, nothing, like, happened where you're like, oh, he's getting beat up. But, like, you know, he just was, like, he was, like, a point behind. Right, yeah. right, exactly. Um so in between rounds, you know, we're telling him to pick it up. We need, you know, more of specific things. Yeah. And boy, did he listen. Oh, he sure listened. <laughs> Second round, he comes out and he is much more aggressive. He's moving forward. He's, you know, doing all the things that we told him to do. And um, yeah, just very impressed with, with, you know, how he could turn that around between yeah. rounds. Because that's, that's really hard to do. Like 
very difficult to do. Um, and he made that happen. Same thing in the third round. We were like, hey, listen, you know, this is a close fight. We need you to really step on the gas here and get after it. And again, and he did. He did. Answered the call. Mm -hmm. You know, he stepped it up, and I was very impressed with him. Me personally, I think that he won round two and three. It was yeah. close, so I'm I, not gonna, you know. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I think he definitely won round three, round two. I was like fence riding that one. So like you know, like I thought like the scorecards read accurate, and like so a pet peeve of ours is when people are like, that should have been a split yeah. decision. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you mean? It should have been a split decision. You're saying that you think judges should disagree. Then, <laughs> right. <laughs> right? If you think it should have been a split decision as your way of saying that fight was closer than what unanimous decision like presents, well, then, yeah, I agree with you. We should go to my scoring system, and then it will more accurately display the score of the fight that will let you be like, oh, that was a close fight, even though someone unanimously won. Because what unanimous means is that the judges all agree. Mm -hmm. So if you think, hey, he won the first round and he won the second, or he, he lost the first round, he won the second, he won the third, well, then you think it was a 29-28. And, like, that's just, like, it. Yeah. Like, that's not a split. Right, no. Splitting rounds is not a split. A split means that a judge thought this guy won and another judge thought the other guy won. Mm -hmm. That's what causes the split. Um, and this was a split decision, which mm -hmm. was, like, not shocking at all because the second round I was, like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, it's like... Oh. Yeah, it was definitely close. It was definitely yeah, it was close. definitely close. And then he won the third. Um, so, like, you know, like, accurate score, like, accurate scoring, like, there. So, like, for example, if we ran my my system, the final score of that fight would have been 5-4. to four. Or, you know, somewhere close to that. No, that would have been the final score of the fight. It would not have been somewhere close to it. That would be exactly it. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was... That particular fight, yes. Oh, yeah, that particular fight. I was just saying, like, a fight that's close, like, it can be No, no, four, that particular like, fight, yeah, yeah. right? So you got Judge A, who scored it 2-1 to one mm -hmm. for Ratani. Judge B scored it 2-1 to one mm -hmm. for Ratani, right? So now he's up 4-2, but Judge C scored it 2-1 to one for Joel, mm -hmm. right? So it's 5-4. Yeah, and that, like, accurately displays, like, how close that right. fight was. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, man, I lost 5-4. Dang, that was a nail-biter. Yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah, it was. Yeah. But right. regardless, great, great fight. Um, you know, and again, what's really impressive with that is how Joel turned the fight around. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's huge. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we gave him good technical advice in the corner, which he followed, mm -hmm. and then we gave him a little bit of motivation. Yep. It was like, <laughs> yeah, you're a Mexican fighter. Go fight like one. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. You know, sometimes you got to get into a fight. Uh, yeah. You know, that's part of, part of the sport. Like, and like us who like, I I certainly do and I believe you do as well. I mean, I know you do. I love to identify as a coach, as like a tactician and mm -hmm. a technician. Mm -hmm. Those are the, I number one, technician is what I would love to be like known for most. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, tremendous with technique, right? Mm -hmm. And then a tactician would be like a close second, you know? Like, that's what I want, because that way, like, you know, I know I'm getting the most out of, like, the nuts and bolts and the mm -hmm. stuff that has less variable. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, so I don't really want to be known as, like, the motivator. Yeah, we're not, like, rah-rah coaches. Yeah, but sometimes you got to get into a fight. Yep. You know what I mean? And I love that about the sport, because, like, it takes so many, there's just so much broadness to it that it takes so much variable and like you know i was like all right dude like it's time to get into like mm -hmm. get out of like what i want to like really be known as and i'm like all right dude you a mexican fighter time yeah to, go time fight to like that one. fire yeah go fight like one ready mm -hmm. yeah so up oh, and he did he answered the call but uh tough opponent uh mike ratani uh was one and oh going into that fight so now two and oh um, Joao has fought some tough dudes. He sure has. Yeah, I mean, his so he's 0-2 right now, which is not very indicative of his skill set. Mm -hmm. uh, losses to Craig Perry mm -hmm. and now Mike Rotani. Craig Perry, who had a nice nice win mm -hmm. on this card, uh, a, a triangle arm lock over over a brown belt. Um, I we were in the back warming people up, so I didn't see the entire thing. But I heard he like hit like some like Granby roll into it or whatever. Oh, that's people awesome. people on our team like our team. They were coming back, like, talking like it was sick. They're like, oh, yeah. it was sick. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so from secondhand information, that's what I got from it. 
So like you know, he fought two, two super super good dudes. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, on the mat. also uh, that was another uh, Stout v uh, PA Combat Sports fight, and that's why I was like, "You guys again?" <laughs> I was like, "What are we doing, dude? Is it just us versus you tonight?" Yeah, but like I said, love those guys. They got a good team. I think they won newcomer of the year like the new gym of the year mm-hmm. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they're... rightfully so i think last year it was high ground mm-hmm. this year was it high ground last year I don't know, dude. oh my god i hope i'm not messing it up whatever um and it was them this year and they like, got a bright future dude yeah yeah you know um and they've, they've been around for a long time too mm-hmm. it's just like stuff like you know ebbs mm-hmm. and flows so the same thing happened with us right like we were like Small team. Oh, we got bigger. Smaller. Like, you know, it's just like... Dude, you know, I, I think a lot of people who are maybe, like, becoming aware of our team, like, now. And they're yeah. just like, oh, like, this is what it, it's always been. It's like, not. No, it has not. No. It has not. We are recently into the success. <laughs> yes. We are... Re- <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, we had, like, decent success. And then, like, at my peak, we were, like, we were we were whooping ass. Yep. We were whooping some ass. And, like... Like, you know, like the mid 2010s, right? Uh-huh. Like 2000, like 13 to 18, like we were doing some mm-hmm. work, you know? And then we went way downhill. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're, we're on our way back up. So, oh, nice like, you know, swing. Yeah, that's how, that's how it works, you know? So don't think, like, just because we've been, at, we've had a strung together a couple good years, that it's always like sunshine and rainbows at mm-hmm. the top. Because it's not. We've been at the bottom, you know? And like, like we, like we mentioned, like with success comes more difficult challenges, mm-hmm. which brings some failure. So like you know, we'll we'll continue to ride those waves. Absolutely. All right. Cool. So on to Max. On to Max. Max <laughs> Gerald. Max. It's it's Gerald. By the way, so a lot of people go Gerald because that's how it should be. <laughs> phonetically. Phonetically, that's how it's spelled. But like Max Gerald. Um, yeah, so Max, uh, another tremendous performance, mm-hmm. just looking so all types of composed and like next level advanced. Dude, like so impressed phenomenal. with his takedown defense. Oh, his takedown defense was tremendous. So Val would hit like a little like bar cigar, like double, mm-hmm. and Max would get that like butt would hit the bat, boom, mm-hmm. hard hip ice to a, to a wizard, right up and out. Dude, like a cat. Like a cat, just looked tremendous. Showed great diverse striking on the mm-hmm. feet. Dropped his opponent in the first round. Mm-hmm. Um, Multiple times. It's hard to follow up yeah. under the current role set, which we'll discuss a little bit about the role set here in a little bit. Um, Yeah, but like he just completely like, you know, like not in a derogatory way, but he outclassed his opponent. He was yes. just a, a, a level above and he is so exciting to watch like that's all you hear is people like wow this kid's amazing wow this kid's amazing i almost think that 247 should consider so he was excuse me nominated for um like amateur like Mm. like rookie of the year right like amateur newcomer of the year right Mm -hmm. and cowboy eddie won it rightfully so Mm -hmm. i almost feel like it's a shame that he debuted at the end of last year. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because, like, that's a that's a, that's an award, like, made for Max. Oh, yeah. You know, like, he embodies that award. But since he made his debut late 2023, he's considered a 2023 fighter. I feel like that should be pushed, you know? In the <laughs> Don't count that for you. Know? Yeah, well, no, I count or it. Or, yeah, yeah, but push it to... <laughs> count it towards 2024, yeah. right? You know what I mean? But whatever. I mean... That's neither here nor there. But, like, yeah, he just looked all types of composed. Mm -hmm. Um, He did give up a takedown in the third, which Mm -hmm. I have no problem with, especially in these two-minute rounds. And he's right to the offense. Yeah. Right to the offense. He attacks a triangle choke, Mm -hmm. um, looking for an arm lock in it, and it eventually gets passed over in the waning seconds of it. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, like, right to to showing a diverse skill set of grappling offense. Absolutely. You know, after putting his opponent down on the ground several times throughout the fight. A super tough opponent. Mm-hmm. Um, we fought him before, Rico fought yeah. him uh, in yeah. a Muay Thai fight, so I already knew like how super tough this kid was going to be, Val Crusoe. Um, so shout out to him as well. Um, but Max, that was a clean, clean win. Also, before his fight, like his pre-fight rituals, I think are very uh, advanced and, and mature for such a young Yeah. Fighter. Um, I think he's they're kind of dorky. Dude, 
I am a fan. He's very composed. I like that he's composed, bro. Just I'm like, that's kind of lame. <laughs> Not everyone's Mike Wilkins. Like, I'm just going to fall asleep under a table and then oh, get up. Two punches, let's go. <laughs> yeah, no, I, lo- I love Max. He's good. He's a kid. Just like we were talking about Tyler's exactly. opponent. Like, Max is a kid. He's yep. 19 years old. Mm-hmm. He's already 2-0, and amateur MMA fighter, 19 years old. He's been training probably since, I, th- I believe, around 15. He started in Cranberry. Mm-hmm. Just like, dude, just like a little dorky kid. And, like, dude, he's so good. Yes. He's so good. He's, like, got very good control over his body. He's, like, athletic as hell. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. like, if you look at him, you wouldn't think so because he looks like, like such a nerd. You're like, dude. <laughs> You're like, can you like fix something about your face? It's like really bothering me right now, you know? Max, <laughs> these views are, are not expressed by both of us. <laughs> Look, dude, listen, he, he knows he needs to work on his face, all right? Because it just upsets me. You know, when I see him, I, just, I do. Every time I see him, I'm like, I would love to hit you. I would love to hit you right now, you know? Just one oh, of God. those kids. But oh. great kid, great kid, F- phenomenal talent, dude. He's gonna, he's gonna be so. Good. Now hold on, hold on. One thing, one thing about Max's fight, the what? scores. Yeah, dude, a split decision, a split decision. They announced, oh, uh, a split, split, and like again, no offense to his opponent, but Max uh, was just like a step ahead, of, multiple steps ahead the entire fight. The entire fight, there was absolutely, absolutely no way you could score any round against Max other than possibly the third, which even then, that's a stretch. Even then, that's a stretch. And I told Max in the cage, he was like, "Hey, like I, I won that, right?" And I was like, "Cause you know, fighters, they, they don't know." Dude, I was what the happened. biggest culprit of that. Like, I would have someone's back for like four minutes, like punching their ears yeah. off, and I'd come back and I'd be like, "What do you think?" And they'd be like, <laughs> "What? Like, do you think it was a 10-8? And I'm like, "No, they're like, I win." And they're like, <laughs> "Yeah, dude, you fucking idiot." And I'm like, "Okay." Ugh. Yeah, like so, it's weird in there. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So Max, you know, he's asking us. He's like, "Yeah." So like that, that went well. I was like, Max, listen, worst case. Worst case, 29-28 for you. Yeah, worst case, 2-1. Meanwhile, two judges give it 30-27, which is the right, yes. which I believe is the right score. I agree. Right? That, I believe it was the right score. I could believe that if you forgot to pay attention, you might have given the third round, or if you didn't know what you were looking at, you right. might have given the third round the vow because he got a takedown, mm-hmm. right? But the takedown was then met with immediately offense from the bottom Mm -hmm. in a position where you can't ground strike right now anyhow. And then like, you know, like previous to that takedown, I think previous to that takedown was just like like a whooping. Yeah. You know, it was a whooping. And a judge was like, oh, this dude who clearly got whooped won that fight. Like it was it was absolutely atrocious. It was disgusting. I would like to see like the scorecards or or I would just like to talk to that judge and be like, what were you looking at? Yeah, what were you looking at? Yeah. That's I think that's like kind of unacceptable. Like he didn't get taken down in any of the rounds. He he dropped super do, like super outclassed the striking. Yes, you know what I mean. And like he was on and 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 he was on top in in every round. Mm-hmm. He was on top because like he would either defend the takedown to top mm-hmm. or he would drop him yeah to top. Like you know what I mean. And it's like too like like it was literally impossible to score. To score two rounds against him. Right. Like, there's certain fights, like Joe House, for example, where I'm like, oh, I personally disagree. I would score it the other way, but I understand. Yes. And, like, a reasonable person, like, could they, someone could explain to me, they'd be like, hey, this is why I gave the fight, you know, to the other guy. I'd be like, yeah. yeah. All right, cool, dude. I get it. Like, that's yeah. not crazy. That fight, I was like, like, this judge doesn't know what he's looking at. Yeah, dude. It was, it was absolutely atrocious. And every, like, and, and thankfully, like, to make sure that I didn't feel like I was going crazy. Everybody agreed. Like they're like split. Like they're announcing it. Like a score for the other person. Like the referee. Like did like one of these. Like, like yeah. Like what faces? Yeah. Like all the inspectors and stuff. They're like, what? Yeah. Like what, the, what is this? Like people in the crowd are like, like whoa and stuff. I think. And Max cools a cucumber. He hears it. He does like the huh face, and then he starts looking around <laughs> at the judges. He was like, who was it? Who was it? Oh, that's like, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah. Thankfully. Thankfully, that ended up not being a disaster. Yeah, but. and what's cr- like again? I don't want to harp on it too long, but what's crazy about that is two thirty twenty sevens, and then yeah. one twenty nine twenty eight the other way. Yeah, I'm like, dude, like that. Yeah, yeah. you weren't paying attention. Yeah, like, yeah, you must have took a bathroom break, or you got a phone call or was checking your text messages. <laughs> yeah. All but, right. Cool. Great fight. Well, um, before we jump into 
to the main fight that we're going to speak of, you know, um, there may be some role changes coming within PA Amateur MMA, right? Fingers crossed, okay? Nothing set in stone yet, but there is a new uh, Pennsylvania State Athletic Commissioner who seems more receptive to to positive change, mm-hmm. right? I mean... PA Amateur MMA has been around now. I believe it started in 2011, 2010, maybe, maybe 2010, something like that. Something like that. So they've got, you know, more than a decade of data, Mm -hmm. you know, so working towards more positive role change. And this commissioner seems to maybe be a little bit more respect, more receptive to his, like uh, his inspectors who have, who have so much experience in the sport. And those are the guys who are like in the trenches. They're in the trenches. Yeah. They're in the, and they do it. Yeah. Like they do it, right? Yeah. Like 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 you know, like they're good. Yes. <laughs> they're good, right? So like, you know, like it seems like the commissioner is kinda like realizing like, holy, holy crap, like you guys got a ton of experience. You know what I mean? What do you think could be better? Right? And they're like, Well, there goes some things that you could think about doing. <laughs> uh so like yeah, we might see some cool cool rule changes coming in the future that I think would make make amateur MMA in Pennsylvania a lot more appeasing and a lot more actually like, like I think it helps everybody the whole way around. I think it's more crowd friendly, right? I think it's more like fighter friendly and I think it's more developmentally like, like uh, positive, you know? So eliminate the shin guards, dude, shout out, shout out to, uh, to, to the PA state athletic commission, especially, uh, uh, you know, like the main inspectors who 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 kind of like have Western PA in the chokehold. All right, he might be a jag, he might be a jag, but Pat's the man. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Also, guys, please get us entertainment Muay Thai. Little gloves in the cage. <laughs> Quit. At, like, let's let's cross one bridge. All right. Right. Let's just like little. Let's do little steps. <laughs> little steps. All right. Like I'll take. I'll take. Uh, I, the, the presented possibilities i'm i'm very excited for me too you know? me yeah. too yeah all right cool let's so dive in. in let's jump into the man the so, man himself lucas, lucas siebert. siebert so uh just like everyone else well hold on we should take it back a second the preparation for this fight um mostly perfect um mostly perfect yeah um what do you mean by that excluding something that i don't think we should talk about um it's just an injury. He, he yes. like an injury. Yes. He yes. had uh, an injury that affected camp. Mm-hmm. That quite honestly, most people would pull out for. Mm-hmm. You know, and I sometimes ask myself, am I a bad? Like, am I am I not doing the right thing for my fighter by like allowing him to push through this? You know, and it was like it was like you know it was one of those like uh, tough talks with yourself. And just like, man, am I doing the right thing here? Like, should I let him fight through this? Da, 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 da. Um, but he did, like, you know, just kind of played it by ear. He seemed to, like, be able to work around it mm-hmm. um, fairly well, um, thankfully. And outside of that, camp went super, super well. Yeah. We got great training in. Um, I felt super confident about the matchup. I did a lot of film work. Yeah, you did a lot of film work. Yeah. And, like, uh, one of these days, like, when I'm done... I can't wait to talk about like all this the secret sauce, but um, oh, we'll never be able to talk about it. Well, because you got to pass it down, and you can't ruin it for them. That's fair enough. Fair enough. You Someone gotta, will learn about it one that's, day. That's 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 your bird in the bear. You got to take like like I I know what you mean. Like you know like like if I like figure out something cool or do something cool, like I'm very excited about it. I'm very proud mm-hmm. about it, and I want everybody to know because like <laughs> I love like. Like, you know what I mean? Not like yeah. I need, like, admiration or credit. But just but like, explaining, like, look at Yeah, and how... it's fun to do. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Like, oh, my God. So then, like, dude, like, think about, like, when you, like, learn a new move or something and you're super excited, mm-hmm. like, or you figure something out about a new move. Yeah. And you're super excited to be like, oh, yeah. And it's like this because. Yeah. Because this does that and this does this. Like, dude, you just get fired up. Think about it. That's literally our entire jobs is gaining knowledge and sharing that knowledge. Yeah. And now I've gained some knowledge can't share it <laughs> yep, you can't well you can share it but you can't sh- broadcast it to the world yeah but regardless you know? i felt very confident that we knew you know jake zach's game inside and out um for as much as you can at this level because yeah. they're still earlier on right they're just both like new pros so they're still seeing dramatic development yeah you know but yeah um 
but you know that went super well all of the training went well we got some great pad work in i know you guys were working on some very specific grappling things that occurred in the fight yeah um and uh you know it really just went according to plan so uh same thing warm up time perfectly you know lucas was in a great you know headspace going in uh we had all the right people in the back it was just great vibes we're smiling having fun uh-huh. and uh yeah he walks out there and uh and he made it happen should we go well, yeah starting the first round so um first round uh lucas starts a little bit on the slower side but you know he's absorbing five minute rounds five minute round that's you kind of should you know ease into things and uh you know he ate a couple low kicks and uh, I want to say one and a half, two minutes in, he had a big, I think it was a right hand. I'm not sure. Um, he had a big right hand, <clears throat> got a little bit rocked, you know. That's okay. That's, you know, things happen, uh, especially, you know, pro level. You know, the, yeah. it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to stop every single strike that's going to come in. He recovered well from it. And, um, you know, I think he went on to dominate the rest of the round. He started to pick up his striking, started to figure out his range, figure out his timing. And um, and then, oh, God, what, maybe f- four minutes in, got a takedown? He got the takedown immediately after getting... Oh, so it was like maybe half of the round or so? Yeah, about half of the round or so. I would say after a little bit past half the round uh, was when he ate, ate, ate that overhand, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and he responded, like, you know, got his feet under him, responded, like, didn't panic shoot, responded yeah. with, a, with a, a setup yes. into a body lock. Got the the lift and finish. Ended up on top. Yeah, that was where the the take on. Dude, isn't that crazy too? And also, I feel like we should just put this as a disclaimer. But like, uh, like your recollection of fights, you know what I mean? Like when you're watching it live, not always perfect. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, especially when you've had like four, three, four days of uh, oh, rough sleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah. So then he finished that round on top. He's you know. Uh, you know, crushing some elbows and, uh, you know, just dominant grappling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great grappling. Um, di- managed the distance while standing, mm-hmm. like, over, like, a supine guard well, you know, to be aware of, like, those kicks to your knees and the up kicks and stuff like that. Was able to, you know, get around the guard, land some big strikes, mm-hmm. work some elbows in there, yeah. things like that. So, yeah, overall, uh, I would say he won that first round. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he won the first round. Because, like, he also, like, Oh, excuse me. He landed a nice big, nice head kick. Mm-hmm. Uh, he outstruck him by by a significant margin. Mm-hmm. Really, like the only thing was like a couple of those calf kicks, those low leg kicks, and then that overhand mm-hmm. right, which you know just like stumbled him a little bit. But like you know, wasn't enough to compensate for just kind of getting beat up right. like the whole yeah. round. Like one one moment, like and especially a moment that didn't even it didn't. Put, yeah, yeah, put him down or affect anything. Therefore, after exactly, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, definitely won that first round. Mm-hmm. So yeah, between rounds, you know, we're we're hitting him with some advice, um, which I also did. There's one thing I forget. He was asking me about low kicks, and in hindsight, I'm like, wait, is he asking me about offensively throwing low kicks or defensively? And I think I misinterpreted it, but regardless, um, you know, we gave him some good advice, and uh, he goes out in the second round. Already has the distance and timing figured out. And um, <clears throat> at a certain point, I was noticing some things about Jake Zach's movement, and I called for uh, a particular flying knee that we'd been yeah. working on. Yeah, and I mean, we got tons of footage of like of him drilling it in the back before the fight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what? Let's, so just a little bit on topic, but off like Lucas's fight. Like my one of my favorite things, like are... Like pet peeves or I'll tell you what grinds my gears <laughs> is when someone's like someone like does something in a fight and then people post like oh he was practicing that like 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 you see like yes. Conor McGregor Aldo right they'll yeah. be like oh he was practicing that in the back or or Jorge Masvidal unfortunately over Ben Askren with the flying knee right they're like he was practicing that Dude, even worse than that is when someone gets knocked out with just like a basic like straight right hand or something and they're yeah. like oh look he practiced it yeah and I'm like first off yeah, no shit. <laughs> yeah. How do you think you think like do you think that the things that do the best things in the fight that do like are the best moments in the fight were by accident? Yeah, they were made up in the moment. Yeah, like no, yeah, th- these yeah, no shit he practiced it. <laughs> like how else do you think he knows how to do it, when yeah. to do it, the timing for it, and the moment to do it in? Yeah. Practice. 
Like, yeah, they're like, like, they're like, oh, like it's some like crazy thing. Like, oh, he had like, 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 like clairvoyant power to see that this would be important. It's like, no, dude, it's freaking film work and practice. Well, and also this, it, it's, it almost seems like that's the only thing that was practiced. So like, imagine if before Masvidal's fight, the whole camp, all he practiced was that knee. Oh, yeah. Then that would be impressive. But dude, they practice everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Regardless of how a fight gets finished, you can almost certainly find some training footage um, of yeah, yeah, that like, thing. Oh, wow, look, he did that in training. With that said, we were looking for that specific knee um, in a very specific way. Uh, and he only threw one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So to um, take the other side, we practiced it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Whatever, dude. All right. So you practiced it. All right. Yeah. So he puts him down, and then and then then with that with that knee, and then just like proceeded to like you know volume ground and pound therefore mm -hmm. after earning himself the TKO victory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. What a great pro debut. Yeah, great pro debut. The kid, man, the kid's amazing. He does what he says. Um, you know, he's not afraid to fail. He's not afraid to put it out there. You mm -hmm. know, and a lot of people don't like him for it, and I just, like, cannot get behind it. I cannot get I cannot get behind not liking this kid for it. And it's like you see, like, all this hate for him, like, online and stuff, and it's like, Lucas? Like, I see him every day. I know, he's so likable. He's, he's I'm like, how do you hate He's such a sweet kid. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how, do you, how do you hate him? You know what I mean? He does, dude, he works hard. He's genuine. He's a kind person. Mm -hmm. You know, all these things. So you don't like that, like, he does, like, positive affirmations. You don't like that he believes in himself. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, what, what don't you like? Well, like it doesn't you know make sense I mean? to me. You don't like that, like, if someone talks shit to him, he'll talk it back. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, he'll talk it back. Like, yeah. So, but hey, here's the thing. At the end of the day, if you have a bunch of fans and you have a bunch of haters, they all pay the same price of admission, you know? So Yeah, they do, but I need them to select your name when they purchase the ticket. I mean, that's true. That's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah. So, yeah, but a like, great pro debut. Congratulations mm -hmm. to Lucas. Sky's the limit for him. Um, again, a win and learn fight. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, expose some things that we can we can work on, especially on my end, in my area. I see some things like... And it's not nothing like, it's not like, oh, like, we didn't work on this. It's just we didn't get to it yet. Yeah. You know, don't forget, like, the kid has been fighting for 18 months. Yeah. You know, he's been fighting for 18 months. You can only do so much, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, you know, check this box, check that box. And always, like, going back and improving in those areas, too. But, like, you know, we got you got to get to, to this stuff. You can't mm -hmm. encompass all of what is MMA in, in, in a decade, let alone, yeah. let alone 18 months. Yeah. 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 So good weekend for the team. We ended up wrapping up uh, the MMA team four and one on the weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, two two pro wins, which mm -hmm. is uh, really good and new for us, right? Like we uh, those are our first two pro wins since Jonas and I were yeah. pros. Yeah. Um, and then we got another two pro fights coming up in March. Mm -hmm. So you know the ball keeps on rolling. And it's really shown the progress that we're making. You know, climbing climbing up the ranks now. You know, going from like exclusively amateur to basically like amateurs. Who are now fighting for titles, mm -hmm. and now we got we got some pros. Go, we got some people moving into the pros. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Fun some things. developmental stuff there, brother. Yeah. All right, cool. So, you got anything else to add? Uh, no, nah, dude. It's time nope, for us it. to get a nap. I hope we were coherent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So that was this week's episode of Listen to Your Coaches. Uh, we'll catch you guys next time, and don't forget, we got a lot of big events. Uh, here coming up, nine Muay Thai fighters fighting this upcoming weekend, uh, March 1st and 2nd. And then we've got MMA fights back to back to back. Three in Kentucky on the 9th, three in Morgantown on the 16th, and then the Brittany Bickhart MMA, our pro MMA debut on March the 23rd. So stay tuned here. We'll have recap show after recap show after recap show. Uh, yeah, and we'll keep you guys up to date and excited about what is going on. All right, we'll see you next time.